So last year, as I was about to do the Karuta Coast, I noticed that I had a stripped crank thread, which meant that the pedal was coming loose and wouldn't tighten anymore. I had an issue and I couldn't do the race. Eventually got home, somebody helped me out. They drilled the hole a little bigger. They threaded in a piece of steel, then the pedal would thread into that piece of steel. Unfortunately, it's not a perfect solution. It looks like the hole that was drilled went in a little skew. So what this means is while you're pedaling, your foot is just doing this. So yeah, I've gotten used to this to some extent, but I finally got the spares to replace the old crank, even though my chainring, there's nothing wrong with the chainring. That is a direct mount chainring, and on the new setup, it's a not direct, I don't know what you call it. I've never done a bottom bracket removal or installing. So yeah, we're gonna remove the old crank setup, try and knock out the old press fit BB, and then see if we can put in all the new stuff. So let's do it. Okay, so I don't have the correct tools to remove the bottom bracket, nor do I have the correct tools to press fit the BB back into the frame. But I did a little research and I saw a few people going the route of a piece of pipe. This is a piece of conduit. I'm not sure if it's the right size though. This is a 20 mil uh, piece of conduit. And then you cut in like a, a plus sign and you split it open. The idea is when you push it through, it will squeeze close and then it will open just behind the bearing which you will hear right now click so yeah there you can see it has made contact with the bearing on the inside with this making contact with the bearing on the inside you will be able to knock the piece of conduit on the other side knocking the bearing outwards with a nice hammer so yeah we're gonna see if that works Not budging. Oh no. Okay, bad luck. The conduit wasn't strong enough. I've got a broken off piece, so it's not gonna work. I'm gonna have to try something else. Something stronger maybe? Or I'm gonna have to mess up the bearing and just knock it out with like a screwdriver or a chisel or something. Okay, so I can't find anything else that I can use that method with the pipe and the plus sign and the spreading of the legs. I'm not too worried about the bottom bracket because I've got a spare one of these. So I'm gonna take a very ugly screwdriver and just knock it at the back. I'm gonna see if I can knock it uh, right around and uh, maybe just give it, get it to budge a little and hopefully not damage the bearing, but if I do, so be it. So this side, I knocked the bearing out. This cup is still stuck here. Oh, but it came out. Nice. Now there's like a, a middle inner part that should just come loose if I have it correctly. Okay. There she goes. Uh, the other cup on the other side is also still stuck, so a little manhandling. And she came out. There's a little spacer over here as well, eh? That is good to know. Okay, so this is the bottom bracket that came out. The bearing 
still seems fine. I might still be able to use it. With the Shimano setup, they gave me a spacer with the bottom bracket as well. But they told me on installation, I should put it on the non-drive-in side. The reason for this is the chainring is now flat. There's no offset. The line components chainring's got like a concave that aims towards the frame. So hopefully the alignment won't be an issue if I install it the way that uh, the bike shop told me to. Okay, so preparation has been done. The frame where the bottom bracket goes in has been cleaned. So I'm gonna take a little bit of nickel compound and just smear it here in the edge where the bearing would press in just to, just to lube it up. Okay, so this is the bearing that goes into the drive-in side. The information that I got from the mechanic at the bike shop is to put the spacer at the non-drive-in side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fit the drive-in side bearing in first. I'm going to put in the drive-in side crank arm, which has got the chainring on, and I'm just going to make sure that the clearance is good for the chain stay and also if it aligns perfectly with the cassette. If not, I'm gonna have to remove it and then put in the spacer on the drive-in side. So yeah, non-drive-in side stays open. Drive-in side, we crank it in. Press it in, we press it in. So because I don't have the uh, bearing press fit tool, to fit the press fit bottom bracket. I did a little research and found a few videos on how people do it with a G-clamp. So this one is pretty cool. You've got a little button here so you can easily adjust, quick adjust and then release and you can start pressing in. What I'm gonna use is a little piece of wood on this side and on the other side to press in the bearing. So hopefully that works out, but now just to get everything aligned. Mm, the alignment. So the drive-in side uh, bearing is pressed in. As you saw, it is a lot more difficult with the cheek lamp, but it did go in. Yeah, let's just check the, the spacing. So the chain ring is not touching the chain stay and chain running on top, chain running on bottom. This looks to be fine. Let's just check if we can see how it aligns with the cassette. So this is where the chain ring is. It looks to be out more to the lower gears. So I'm not too sure if it is incorrect or correct, but I know it's not touching the chain stay. That's already a good sign. I'm going to put in the other bearing on the other side and uh, just carry on with the job. Okay, so I had a little idea uh, with my pieces of wood that kept on falling out of place. Uh, I used a little bit of electrical tape and uh, hopefully this works better. Let's see. Okay. splines of the crankshaft and there's a little hole there and I'll show you why that is there. So Shimano has this little plate in the middle. There's a little peg there that goes into that hole on the crankshaft. So we lift up this little plate and then this should slide over like so. 
So. from the other side okay so the battery died on me so this is the next day we're in the garage now where we left off last I wanted to show you this little this little plate here in the middle you're supposed to be able to lift this plate there you go and then you slide it on to the shaft of the drive inside crank and then this little plate over here it's got a little peg that lines up with the hole that is in the shaft and then you just clip it in, locks into place and then you just tighten your bolts. I did have a little battle getting this plate out of the way and putting it on. Then I noticed that one of the bolts, if you loosen it completely, you have got full access to the plate, which is there. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little peg right there at the end that will go into the hole and that'll keep the crank in its place. I'm gonna put the crank arm on and tighten the box. Sure there's a torque setting for it but I don't have a torque wrench so finger tight. The next step is to put on this little preload adjuster or something like that. So this little cap will just screw, a screw in there and you're supposed to also have a tool that grips into that splines over there. Uh, I don't have a tool but I made one which will work because you're not supposed to tighten this very much. So yeah, let's fit this little cap in there. Hmm. That should do it. figured out that the cap doesn't want to go in and it was because I had the bolts too tight to begin with so I just loosened them up to make sure that that little preloader starts threading in until I was satisfied with how tight that was I just uh, went over the bolts quickly so yeah let's check the alignment okay if you check over here there's still a lot of play nice little gap over there so that chain ring is not going to touch there. The chain is now in the lowest gear and it does look to be slightly angled. So with the chain in the top gear, the granny gear, it does look like the alignment is way more out than, you know, on the bottom gear but I've got a solution for that. I saw in a video that you can loosen the chain ring and put in uh, washers for spacers to get the chain ring to go in a little bit more to the frame which is what I'm needing at the moment. I'm gonna try and do that and see if it makes a difference. So my idea is that this chain ring bolts onto the crank arm like this so I want to put washers this side so that the chain ring would eventually move inwards if that makes any sense. 8mm washers for the 8mm bolt thickness wise they might be like one and a half mil I'm not sure so I'm gonna try two washers which is probably not a good idea probably gonna need to get a thicker washer at least it will give me a good idea if it will work or not so Now to put some pedals on with a little nickel compound onto the thread. 
not too much. Cool. Okay, so everything is put together. We've got pedals on the bike. The chain line doesn't look too bad. So I'm gonna do a little shifting and see how it feels. Okay, so I removed the old crank set, I removed the old bottom bracket, I installed a new bottom bracket, I installed the cranks and made a little adjustment on the chain line, which did affect the shifting a little, so I, I just adjusted a little with the barrel adjuster. That seemed to sort that issue out. Yeah, now I'm gonna take it for a ride and see how it goes. So that's the end of this video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you learned something. I probably did a lot of things wrong, so if there's something that you picked up that could have been done a little different, maybe drop it in the comments. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.